Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Bearhawk Aircraft announces first flight of side-by-side -side Bearhawk Companion. Also, Margaret Walls aces her 900th ferry flight. And Navy declares IOC for j -PAL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with the latest news, so let's go ahead and start with Bearhawk Aircraft tells us the first flight of a Bearhawk Companion, their side-by-side two-place aircraft has taken place. The Companion is a utility aircraft derived from the tandem-seated Bearhawk patrol wings and the four-place Bearhawk Model 5 fuselage. A design goal cruise speed of 145 miles per hour has reportedly been met, as well as a payload target of more than 1,000 pounds. The first flight of a Bearhawk Companion was performed by the aircraft's builder, Dave Leonard of Bethel, Vermont, an experienced builder and mechanic. Dave has built two prior Bearhawk aircraft, including four place and LSA models. He is currently assembling a patrol. Working closely with Bob Barrows, creator of the Bearhawk lineup, Dave incorporated a 180 horsepower Lycoming 0360 engine built by Bob into the first flying companion. The aircraft features completely flush riveted aluminum wings, a super strong steel tube fuselage, and an airfoil shaped empennage. The two place companion is reported to handle and perform much like the narrow patrol. A slightly shorter fuselage apparently makes it sportier than the SUV pickup style Bearhawk 4 place. The build was completed in 10 months and an estimated 1,000 hours. The first companion has accumulated 12 hours thus far. After the break, a German-born ferry pilot is celebrating a huge milestone that took more than four decades to achieve. Details after these messages. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. 56 seconds UIMC training course from U.S. Helicopter Safety Team goes live. The U.S. Helicopter Safety Team and Helicopter Association International have reported that the final phase of the USHST's 56 seconds to live unintended flight into instrument meteorological conditions awareness and prevention course is now live and available for use by pilots. This one-hour course provides pilots with scenario-based training designed to teach them to recognize situations in which they can reduce the chance of an accident by stopping a flight before an accident occurs. New STC permits Texas Turbine to install Hartzell Composite or Aluminum Props. 
Texas Turbine Conversions has FAA approval to allow Supervan Conversion customers to choose either structural composite props or more economical aluminum props as part of their conversion package. Now Cessna Caravan owners and operators with the Supervan Turboprop Conversion can choose between a 100-inch diameter structural composite prop or the more economical 109.5 diameter aluminum option. Both propellers are four blade and offer a 60 pound or 25 pound weight savings, respectively, over the original super van propeller. Sid Hartzell propeller president JJ Frisch. NBAA joins coalition seeking action on aviation sustainability initiatives. NBAA and a coalition of aviation groups have urged Congress to consider wide-ranging and comprehensive legislative proposals to achieve dramatic carbon emissions reductions in upcoming infrastructure legislation. The aviation groups called on the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee, U.S. House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and the U.S. House Science. Space and Technology Committee to consider legislative efforts in four core areas that will be critical to realizing the aviation sector's environmental goals. Rocket Lab recovers first stage following second stage failure. The rocket business can be hard. On May 15th of this year, Rocket Lab experienced an anomaly almost three minutes into the company's 20th Electron launch. Following a successful liftoff, Electron proceeded through a nominal first stage engine burn, stage separation, and stage two ignition. Shortly after the second stage ignition, the engine shut down, resulting in mission loss. However, the first stage safely completed a successful splashdown under parachute as planned, and Rocket Lab's recovery team retrieved the stage from the ocean for transport back to Rocket Lab's production complex. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. A German-born ferry pilot is celebrating their 900th ferry flight. Dyer is recognizing Margaret Waltz for her 900th ferry flight, which she achieved this month on a France-U.S. transatlantic trip with one of the company's TBM 940s. As one of the world's most experienced ferry pilots, Waltz departed Dyer's Aircraft Division headquarters and TBM production site in Tarbes, France on May 11th, arriving three days later at Delaware County Airport near Muncie, Indiana. The milestone journey was completed in a flight time of 15 hours and 38 minutes, involving stopovers at Wick in the UK, Kevlavik, Iceland, and Canada's Goose Bay, followed by initial U.S. landings at Bangor, Maine, and Scranton in Pennsylvania. Upon her arrival at Delaware County Airport to complete the trip, she was welcomed by personnel from Muncie Aviation. Also on hand to mark Walt's achievement were members of Dyer Team, several who flew in from the company's U.S. headquarters at Pompano Beach, Florida. This 900th ferry flight marks 45 years of activities at the service of GA for the German-born ferry pilot, who lives in Pennsylvania. In 1991, Waltz was one of the first pilots to ferry a TBM family airplane across the Atlantic Ocean for Dyer. Since then, she was delivered more than 200 TBMs to North America. After these messages, finally after more than a decade of testing, Navy declares IOC for J-PALS. More on that after the break. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. 
We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. Navy declares IOC for j -PALS. That declaration is the culmination of many years of system development and testing activities that began in 2008. The Navy has declared initial operational capability for the Joint Precision Approach and Landing System, signaling the systems ready to provide precision approach and landing capabilities to tactical carrier aircraft at sea in support of naval aviation operations worldwide. JPALS is a global positioning system based that integrates with shipboard air traffic control and landing system architectures to guide fixed wing tactical carrier aircraft with pinpoint approach and landings and amphibious assault ships in an all weather and sea surface conditions. The initial operational capabilities was declared by Rear Admiral Gregory Harris, Director of Air Warfare Division, N-98, Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, following the successful installation, integration, and flight certification of the first flight j production unit aboard USS Carl Vinson in December 2020. After the flight certification, the j team continued working with the Navy's operational test community to demonstrate that the F-35C could effectively conduct at-sea precision approaches to the flight deck and that adequate manning, training, and sustainment infrastructure were in place to support and sustain j operations while globally deployed. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.